Dr. Jane Morgan. Hello, Dr. Hello, Morgan. Thanks good for morning. coming in. Good morning. You know, I feel like anecdotally, I've been hearing so much about people getting COVID, suspecting that they have COVID, they've right. had COVID, so we're hearing it about it a lot more. Uh, but regarding this new dominant strain, what should we know about it? How concerned should we be, if at all? Yeah, so this strain, the KP311, also the KP23, they're responsible for about 60 to 65 percent of what we have circulating right now. There's another strain as well, the LB1. We should be concerned about it because just in a short period of time, two or three months, it really has become a dominant strain. Now, these are still offshoots of JN1, for those of you who are really paying molecular attention. <laughs> these are still offshoots, <laughs> yeah, and so still a big part of this Omicron family. And so our vaccines this year are focused on the JN1 variant, and these current circulating variants are offshoots of the JN1, so we're still expecting them to be good matches. Okay. Mm, that damn JN1. That <laughs> JN1. Can't get rid of it. Can't get rid of it. <laughs> so let me ask you, um, uh, the federal government has now brought back free tests, mm -hmm. free treatments, uh, free vaccines. Is that indicative of what's expected as we go into the fall and winter that there's going to be an even greater surge? You know, when we look at that, it's something to really think about because at the end of the August, a lot of those free services um, were ending. Yeah. And so people really needed to get in if they were going to get it for free. What we're looking at in the fall is this seasonal variation as it joins all of its other sister viruses, the flu and RSV. But the problem with COVID is we keep waiting on that and we keep having a summer surge as well. And so by the time the vaccines come out, we've been awash in a summer wave and then the vaccines actually are late. And so we've got to really start to think about moving these meetings up um, off the calendar, moving them up ahead such that we can get ahead of this summer surge. Kids can be vaccinated before they go to school and we don't have these variants that continue to evolve. They continue to evolve because we continue to allow ourselves to be exposed and we have more and more and we continue to chase this, uh, chase this ball when we really should be getting ahead of it. I think part of the issue is we keep expecting COVID to finally fall in line with all of its sisters. This will be the year that it does it, yeah. and it really isn't. And then the summer wave this year even started a little earlier. Mm. Uh, what do you say to the people, though, you know, including my friends and people at home are saying, mm -hmm. well, look, you know, it's it, the symptoms haven't been so bad. Mm -hmm. We're just going to learn to live with it. it it's an endemic now. And do I really need to get a vaccine? And Amara, the symptoms have been mild, and that's really been the hook and it's making people feel fairly complacent. But the symptoms can linger, even if they're yeah. mild, they can linger for long periods of time. And I mean, weeks and months, even though they're mild, you won't need hospitalization, you won't need to go to the doctor, yeah. but it will really be a drag on the quality um, of your life. And so these are all things we have to start to consider with regard to what type of health and what type of society we're going to live in. We have probably about four times as much COVID now um, as we had just a few months ago. And as far as summer surges, this has been the highest summer surge that we have had so far. Mm. The other thing to think about is we keep talking about wastewater. We're measuring wastewater and our wastewater values um, are high, but we have to remember that wastewater lags mm -hmm. behind the actual viral presence yeah. because it takes a few days for humans to start to shed the virus into the wastewater. So remember, whenever we're looking at wastewater, it's actually giving us a reading from a few days before. So we don't actually know um, what's coming and whether or not this wastewater is an accurate indicator, whether it will even be higher. All right, Dr. Jane Morgan, thank you for helping us understand what is here and what is coming <laughs> as it relates to COVID. Thank you. Good to see you, oh, Dr. Morgan.